It's become normal for a new government to come into office announcing things were much worse than they thought and attempting to reset expectations. But Jim Chalmers' job this time around is slightly different. Whatever the fiscal sins of the former government, the new Treasurer's problems have rested more with the weather gods and with Vladimir Putin, whose war in Ukraine supercharged a price surge driven by COVID-linked supply chain problems and a commodity price spike. There is essentially just one underlying problem, inflation. The question is how long the inflation surge lasts. There are reasons to be cautiously optimistic about some of those factors. Some commodity prices have already begun to ease. Supply chains are beginning to be put back together again. Container shipping costs have fallen quite significantly over the last few months. Now, a new Labor government is having to adjust its expectations and that of the electorate. It's not a question this time of having to dump big spending promises. It didn't make all that many of them. But the economic circumstances will still mean the government is presiding over tough times being experienced by voters and being constrained in what it wanted to achieve and promised. Most notably, real wages growth after almost a decade where wages have gone backwards. Real wages growth relies on moderating inflation and getting wages moving again. In fact, the Treasurer was foreshadowing today that real wages are actually going to be going further backwards in the short term as annual inflation is forecast to peak at just under 8%. Higher inflation also hits economic growth and with it the labour market. Unemployment is also going to be heading higher, the last thing any Labour government wants to see. There is little prospect of any short-term budgetary relief for households. Inflation will hit the federal budget too, as welfare payments that are pegged to inflation rise, and the government is forced to pay a higher interest bill on its existing debt. The likelihood is, in the absence of any major policy changes announced in the upcoming revised federal budget on the 15th of October, that the deficits for the current financial year and the one beyond could be higher than had been forecast in the last budget of the coalition government. The usual way of dealing with higher inflation is through monetary policy. That is, for the central bank to lift interest rates, and as a result, the cost of money. Some might question why this would have any impact on inflation that is surging as a result of higher vegetable prices or war-induced shortages. Central banks don't know how high they need to raise interest rates in order to get inflation down to where they want it to be. The structure of most economies has changed considerably since the last time they were seeking to bring inflation down from these sorts of levels.